Hi everybody and welcome to our module on the Hardy-Weinberg Law. The Hardy-Weinberg Law or Hardy-Weinberg Principle is used in studies of populations. It is used to derive genotypes from allele frequencies. So let me be very clear about what I mean by this. For all genes in our body we have two copies, one that came from our mother and one that came from our father. And in many cases in the cells in our body those two genes are identical. So for example we might have two copies of gene A in the cells of our body. However, some genes exist as more than one allele. For example, that gene could be found in one form, which we denote by a capital letter A, and another form, which we denote by a lowercase letter A. So for genes in which there is more than one allele, you can use the Hardy-Weinberg law to determine the frequency with which the different alleles occur together inside the cells of an individual. So in order to understand how this is used, you need to understand the terminology. So an allele is one of two or more alternative forms of the same gene. So a key point here is that this law is used to study single genes that have multiple forms. And an important distinction that you need to understand as a student is that this law is not used for different genes found at different loci on chromosomes or on different chromosomes. Different rules apply in those scenarios. This only applies to single genes that exist in multiple different alleles. To make this more clear, let's go through an example. Let's assume that a given gene has two possible alleles, which we'll denote as capital A and lowercase a. And let's suppose we know that the allele capital A is found in 40% of genes. We'll denote this 40% as the variable P, and we'll say it's equal to 0.4. If allele capital A is found in 40% of genes, then allele little case a must be found in the remainder of the genes, in other words, in 60%, because there are only two possible forms of this gene. We'll denote the frequency of allele little a as the letter q and say that's equal to 0.6. And this brings me to one of the first principles of the Hardy-Weinberg law, and that is that for a gene with only two alleles, p plus q must equal 1. In other words, if 40% of the alleles are found in form p, the remaining 60% must be found in form q, such that p plus q total 1. So what we're going to use the Hardy-Weinberg law to do now is to determine the frequency of the different combinations of genes to determine the different genotypes. All of us have two copies of gene A in the cells of our body, so what is the frequency of two capital A's being found together, two lowercase a's being found together, or a mixture of the two alleles being found together? On this slide, I've written our variables P and Q in the top right corner, so once we know P and Q, the Hardy-Weinberg law says that the frequency of two capital A's being found together is P squared. That would be 0.4 times 0.4, which is 0.16, or 16%. The frequency of a capital A and a lower A together is 2 times P times Q. So that would be 2 times 0.4 times 0.6, which equals 0.48, or 48% of the time. And then finally, the frequency of two lowercase a alleles found together is Q squared and that's equal to 0.6 times 0.6, or 0.36, which is 36% of the time. And note that these three numbers all add up to 1.0. They have to, because these are the only three ways that the two genes can be found together, so they must add up to 100%. And that brings me to the second principle of the Hardy-Weinberg law, and that is this equation at the bottom left side of the screen, which says that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared is equal to 1. So what we've done here with this law is we've taken known frequencies of the two different alleles and we've used them to determine how likely it is that they will be found in all the different mixtures in which they can potentially exist in an individual. So let me just pause here and review what all the different variables in the Hardy-Weinberg law represent. At the top right of the screen, I've written the values we got in our example for P, Q, and all the different combinations. So the first element of the Hardy-Weinberg law says that P plus Q equals 1. In our example, P was 0.4. This means that 40% of genes in this population are big A. That's what the value of P represents. Q was equal to 0.6. This means that 60% of genes in the population are little a. We then use those values of P and Q to calculate P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared. Let's talk about what those numbers mean. So P squared in our example was 0.16. This means that 16% of individuals in the population are big A, big A. 2PQ was 0.48. This means that 48% of individuals in the population are heterozygotes. They have one big A and one little a. And then finally, Q squared was 0.36. This means that 36% of individuals were little a, little a. Make sure you understand what all these values in this box represent intuitively because you're often given a description of the value 
and you need to figure out whether the question is describing the value of p, q, p squared, q squared, or 2 pq. Now remember that at the beginning of this video I said that the Hardy-Weinberg law is used in studies of populations. Well if you want to apply the law to a particular population, that population has to meet certain assumptions that are inherent to the Hardy-Weinberg law. So let's talk about what those assumptions are now. First of all, the population has to be large. The law cannot be applied to small groups of people. In addition, there needs to be completely random mating. People can't be more likely to mate with the large A's and less likely to mate with the little a people, or this will make the law invalid. There can't be any gene mutations. Genes that are big A have to stay big A as they are passed down through generations, and genes that are little a have to stay little a as they are passed down through generations. There can be no migration in or out of the population. You can't have lots of big A's coming into the population and lots of little a's leaving. This will make the law invalid. And then finally, there can be no natural selection. If you have a selection pressure, that makes it more likely that people will die if they carry the little a gene, then this will make the Hardy-Weinberg law invalid. If those assumptions are met, then for that population, the allele frequencies will not change from one generation to the next. In other words, if 40% of the genes are big A, then 40% of the genes will always be big A from one generation to the next for that population if all those assumptions are met. And if 60% of the genes are little a, then 60% of the genes will always be little a from one generation to the next, and thus you can apply the Hardy-Weinberg law in order to calculate the frequencies with which these two alleles will be combined. That is said to be a population that is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Now in many cases, actual populations do not 100% meet all the assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg law. However, if it is felt that a particular population is close enough to meeting them, then it will often be stated that they are close enough that you can apply the Hardy-Weinberg law to calculate gene frequencies. One of the places where the Hardy-Weinberg law is very useful is in autosomal recessive diseases. These are rare conditions, and in these diseases, the disease frequency is often easy to determine. For example, if we say that the disease version of the gene is lowercase a, and a person has to have two copies of lowercase a to develop disease, then it's fairly easy to figure out that 1 in 5,000 individuals have disease because they're sick and they are brought to medical attention. What's not known is the carrier frequency. In other words, how many people are walking around with one normal copy of the gene and one disease copy of the gene. And this can be determined by the Hardy-Weinberg law. And this is something you're often tested on. So let's go through an example of that now. So let's suppose that disease X is caused by a recessive gene. And let's suppose that we know that disease X occurs in 1 in 4,500 children. And we know this because these children are sick from disease X and they're brought to medical attention. Well, this means that we know the value of Q squared. Remember, Q squared is the frequency with which two disease alleles occur together. That is 1 out of 4,500 or 0.0002. From this, we can calculate Q. Q is the square root of 0.0002, and that works out to 0.015. What this means is that the frequency of the disease allele in this population is 1.5%. That's what the value of Q represents. Well now we can easily calculate p because p plus q equals 1, so p must equal 1 minus 0.015, and that works out to 0 0.985. This means that the frequency of the healthy allele in this population is 98.5%. We can now go ahead and use the Hardy-Weinberg law to calculate the carrier frequency. That's equal to 2 times p times q, so that will be 2 times 0.985 times 0.015, which works out to 0.029, or roughly 3%. So what we have done here is used an observation about the frequency of sick children and used it to calculate the percentage of people in the population who are carriers. And we've done all this through the Hardy-Weinberg law. Now one other point, for very rare diseases, P is often very close to 1. In this example on the screen here, P was 0.985, which is very close to 1. In these situations, you can often just assume P is 1 for simplicity and calculate the carrier frequency as 2 times q instead of 2 times p times q. In this example, if we had said the carrier frequency is 2 times q, it would have been 2 times 0.015, and that works out to 3%, which is basically the number we got anyway. X-linked recessive diseases represent a special case where you can apply the Hardy-Weinberg law, but you have to understand a couple of tricks in doing so. So in order to understand this, let's imagine that we have an X-linked recessive disease such that individuals can carry either a normal X chromosome or a diseased X chromosome, which I will denote X sub D. 
In this situation, there are two potential male genotypes. Males can either be X sub dy or normal XY. There are, however, three potential female genotypes. Females can either have two normal X chromosomes, two disease X chromosomes, or a mixture of the two. The first trick to applying the Hardy-Weinberg law to X-linked disease is to consider the males and females as separate populations. If we first consider the males as one population, then among this group, P plus Q must equal 1. In other words, all males must have either the diseased X chromosome or the X chromosome. Once we accept this fact as true, then P must equal the frequency of healthy males. Any male with a healthy copy of the X chromosome must be a healthy male. Q must equal the frequency of diseased males. Any male with a diseased copy of the X chromosome must have disease. So in other words, from just knowing the allele frequencies, we have also determined the frequencies of healthy and diseased individuals. We don't need to use Q squared, 2PQ, or P squared among the males. We just need to know the values of P and Q. Once you've done this, the second trick to applying the Hardy-Weinberg law to X-linked diseases is to recognize that males and females will have the same allele frequencies. So whatever P was for males must also be the P value for females. Whatever Q was for males must also be the Q value among females. Once we accept that, we can now determine the frequency of different genotypes among females by analyzing this population separately with the Hardy-Weinberg law. Among females only, P squared must be the frequency of healthy females with two normal X chromosomes. 2PQ is the frequency of carrier females with one disease chromosome and one normal X chromosome. And finally, Q squared is the frequency of diseased females who have two copies of the abnormal X chromosome. And that concludes our module on the Hardy-Weinberg Law.